So essentially what we are looking for is this combination, we are looking for three things. One is uh, the two pole stars, the second one is uh, the 24 degree obliquity and the third one from this verse it is telling us what it is saying is it says the peak of Hemanta Rutu, the peak of Hemanta which means what? approximately one month before 21st December in our times. Okay? It is saying the position of the earth was at the apopsis, that is what that verse is saying. And at the peak of Grishma, it was the position of the earth was at periapsis which was closest to the, closest to the sun. Now let us go to the timing of it. If we have to bring those all three things together, that we have two stars, pole stars, one in the north, one in the south, the obliquity is equal to 24 degree and the peak of Hemanta at the apopsis and peak of Grishma at the periapsis down to the day, the two month season. So right in the middle down to the day, the periapsis and apopsis location, the timing comes out is at 12,000 BCE and now we have that Surya Siddhanta. So something you know if we think one is impossible like how come it is a 14,500 years, if you have this picture you think okay that makes perfect sense. There is a civilization going on in all fronts and things are being added, things are being modified, things are being updated. Alright, Namaskar to everyone, uh, we are going to do a uh, three talk session today. But do not be scared, you know, we are going to limit it to 20 minutes each, each talk. Um, so, the first one on the ancient updates to Surya Siddhanta. And uh, I put the photo there because my co researcher there, you know, uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Bhatti, she is based in Gandhidam, Gujarat. Uh, and so, this is a, this was a joint research project. By the way, what I am what presenting here is essentially the exact thing I presented at Oxford University uh, at their conference. And uh, so, it will be interesting to see uh, or the compare the, their reaction versus your reaction at the, at the end of this. Uh, all right, I will come back to minute uh, in, in a minute what that 580 CE is. But let us talk about what is Surya Siddhanta. How many of you have heard Surya Siddhanta, the word Surya Siddhanta before? Excellent. Okay. Um, it has uh, 14 chapters and about 500 verses. It is much uh, respected text on astronomy, the Indian text on astronomy and respected around the world. Okay. Um, it is not a uh, elementary book on astronomy, you know it is written in such a, uh, a rich language that you know you are expected to be an expert astronomer to even understand what is written. Okay. It is not an introductory test. It is something you know like a pocket book with the formulas written so to say. Um, this one I am quoting is from chapter 12, there are 14 chapters as I said and what it is saying, let us go to the translation, it says thus everywhere on the terrestrial globe, our earth, uh, people suppose their own place higher than that of others of course, yet this globe is in space where there is no above and no below. Okay. So, the, the golastasya kwa urdhvam kwa vapyadaha, where is above, where is below because it is a, it's a sphere. Okay. So, think of a sphere like do we, did we know that, but I will come back to 580 in a minute. So, that is the sphere that earth there. Now, in geography we use what longitudes and latitudes. Okay. So, think of a longitude, where does the zero longitude exist in today's time? Anyone knows the answer? Greenwich, okay. So, it goes to the Royal Observatory in London, you know, the Greenwich is just outside London and that is where it is 0, okay. Do you know how it went there? I do not want to go into the history, but you know, when the British were ruling, I mean, they are the lord of the world. So, that is where it has to start everything, right. But we will come to that in a minute. Now, uh, so that is our longitude and then we have the latitudes. The equator is 0 and from equator, if you go all the way to the North Pole, that is 90, you go to the South Pole, that is 90. The earth is at the center. Now, this, this long, longitudes and latitudes, I am calling them terrestrial latitude, latitudes and longitudes. They are on the surface of the earth, right. We talk the uh, Delhi as what 77 north and so on. Now, imagine this just for imagination, but uh, imagine that grid on the surface of the earth and expand it all the way against the sky. And what you have got is a celestial longitude and celestial latitude, okay, the same definitions. Now, in modern astronomy, we, we use the term 
declination and right ascension okay essentially for latitudes and longitudes so remember the 90 degrees for the north celestial pole the 90 degrees for the south celestial pole so when i'm talking astronomy not to confuse with the latitudes and longitudes on the earth but i'm talking about the stars okay uh, all right so 580 i forgot to mention what the 580 is now when the western civilization they became aware of surya siddhanta like most of the indologists after 1700 or so so they translated the text in a hurry okay but do you know what they all thought and they claim i mean burgess if you read the burgess commentary they said okay that's a 1500 year old text okay and based on the limited evidence they're actually right the the longitudes that i refer to and then also the latitudes right so if you look at the longitudes of the nakshatras now indian system is what 27 nakshatras those are the stars in the sky and surya siddhanta gives their specific position in in the longitudes celestial longitudes if you take those positions and if you take the current longitude positions in today's time and if you see what is the difference between the two and if you do the calculation astronomy calculation it will take you to approximately 580 c so to that extent they were correct to think that the text is from about uh, 580 c or 1500 years old I'll, I'll talk some uh, interesting funny things and how they tried to put the Surya Siddhanta down based on that okay but let's move on so 580 is a correct okay based on the longitude correction if you go back the Surya Siddhanta values take us to 580 c and therefore they said yes it's a decent text but it is only 1500 years old if you go to uh, Wikipedia for example or Google Google it it will say Surya Siddhanta is from somewhere 500 BCE to 800 CE that is based on this okay but what we thought is let's explore the Surya Siddhanta the context was my work on Ramayan Valmiki Ramayan so I had looked at all the astronomy observations more than or close to 600 and all of them when you objectively test it in a scientific fashion they lead you to a specific date like 13 millennium BCE and not even a very generic number a very specific year like 12,209 BC for uh, the year of Ram Ravan Yuddha and so on so we were looking at it so that's fine Valmiki Ramayana is telling me something Mahabharata is telling me something now what does Surya Siddhanta has to say okay now anyone knows the original author of Surya Siddhanta it's Mayasur it's right at the beginning it said it's a Mayasur you know Surya son gave the knowledge to Mayasur you know in fact Surya's uh, proxy came and gave the knowledge to Mayasur you know that's how the knowledge will come um, so we started looking at exploring other references and to our astonishment we found this one reference now remember Surya Siddhanta has been translated it's been commented upon many and the commentaries are very interesting but I'm going to walk you fast through it what this says let's go to the translation now watch the language there are at some point Surya Siddhanta is saying there are two pole stars <coughs> one each near the northern celestial pole that plus 90 one near the southern celestial point minus 90 from equatorial location think of as a Singapore for example these stars are seen along the horizon that makes sense right from there at the equator you're going to see as if they're on the horizon the pole stars are seen along the horizon and you know I'm just going to skip this this is a north celestial point this is south celestial point 90 degrees so what essentially Surya Siddhanta is saying is that there are two pole stars okay one in the north one in the south now why this is a big deal um, before I get into this another another phenomenon that we all should be familiar because I'm going to present Surya Siddhanta evidence is this there is something called apopsis and periapsis see the Sun is at the center earth is going around it right and you know so seasons are happening but there is something else the the, the, the this orbit is not exactly circular so what happens is at some point apopsis and think of it a as like away okay apopsis the point of apopsis is when earth is farthest from the sun as it goes around and periapsis is when earth is closest to the sun okay and this point also keeps on shifting just keep that in mind okay all right so we are going to use this model the you know basically the logic of scientific discovery explanation prediction testing the triangle we need 
to fill all these five, otherwise the scientific objective testing is not complete. Okay? So, looking at the evidence from Surya Siddhanta, I am going to present three pieces of evidence from the exactly same chapter. Now, it does not need to be from the same chapter, it happens to be from the same chapter. Uh, the first one, the, all are from the chapter 12, the first one is two pole stars, the one the reference that I just showed you. Surya Siddhanta is saying there are two pole stars, one each near the north celestial point, another near the south celestial point. The second one is the earth's obliquity, everyone understands obliquity, it is the earth's angle we typically say 23 degree. But you know what, it is not exactly 23 degree always, right now it is 23.4. But you know, it also goes through its nod like this and that nod one cycle takes 41,000 years. So, it goes from like 22 point something down there all the way to 24 and slightly more, right now it is 23.4. So, that is the earth's obliquity we are going to look at and then just now what I mentioned the points of periapsis and the points of apopsis. Okay? So, we will look at these three. We will then do the calculations, simulations with the modern astronomy data and then we will draw our inference as to when this particular update might have happened in Surya Siddhanta. Okay. So, the effect of the precession of the earth's axis, uh, if you have listened to my previous lectures by this time you must be experts, but you know besides the earth is rotating around itself, everyone knows that, then earth is rotating around the sun also, everyone knows that and the earth's axis, now I showed you how that nod changes, but there is something else. The earth's axis goes around like this, pointing at a different areas of the sky and that one circle is completed and it takes 26,000 years, that is another phenomenon not to confuse with this. Okay, it is this and it is this. So, <clears throat> because of this precision of earth's axis, what happens? The earth is pointing, the earth's axis is pointing somewhere different place in the sky and if there is a bright star, we call that a pole star. Right now, if you look at it and I am going to show you both the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere uh, or rather the pole re polar region. Right now, in our times, 2000 CE, right? 2100 does not matter, plus minus 2000 years is just fine. That is our pole star. Anyone knows the name of the pole star? Dhruvatara. What is the modern astronomy English name? Polaris. Polaris. That is the one that I circled is our Polaris. Right now, if you look at it, there is no distinct bright star in the southern hemisphere. So, we do not have a second pole star. And remember, we are talking about the two pole stars, not two pole stars in one place, one here and one here. Okay? Now, if we go backward, uh, we can find possibly multiple pairs that sometime in the past we could have had you know one pole star here and one pole star on the south side. For example, I am showing this is the time 2900 BCE, this one anyone knows the uh, name of the star? See this is our Draco constellation or Shishumar okay? and that, that star that I have circled is Thuban and our Indian literature is full of these references to Thuban especially post Veda Shaka Pravachan times, you know the um, Aranyakas and um, Brahmanas and Upanishad, not so much Upanishad, they are full of this and even the astronomy text. So, there is a bright star there in the, in the south too around 3000 BC, but you know we can have many combinations. So, for example, if you go further back all the way to say 12000 BCE, we have the two brightest stars at the same time they happen to be the pole stars. This one here is Abhijit, Brahmarashi or Vega and that one there anyone wants to guess? Canopus or Agastya, there is the star of Agastya in the south. So, if you go back to 12000 BC, they were also the two bright pole stars in the thing and of course, you can find additional combinations, but how do we select? How do we know that Surya Siddhanta is referring to which two pairs of the stars? You know, is it to 2900 BC, 12000 BC, or any other time? So, well, that is when you know we need two points to define a line, we need three points to define a curve, we have got three points. Okay? So, let us see what happens. This is what I meant by the Earth's axis and its uh, obliquity, right now it is 23.4. Now, Surya Siddhanta has two references. I am just going to go with one right now that comes from the same chapter, 12th chapter. And like, you do not have to read it, You're, you can uh, trust my translation and what it means, that is Agama, nobody disagrees on that one. It is saying it is 24 degree, 
okay it is 24 degree now those of you are not that familiar they will say what's the big difference 23.4 and 24 you know kind of close let me just take a quick digression and tell you what how Burgess interpreted that so they were thinking uh, that western uh, indologists who had access to Surya Siddhanta so that time they knew like you know uh, so they assumed 1500 uh, year old text and they could figure out mathematically astronomically what was the inclination very close to that number 23.4 maybe 3 maybe 5 maybe 6 and Surya Siddhanta is saying 24 Surya Siddhanta has a chapter on how to make sophisticated instruments astronomy instruments so Burgess writes actually in a commentary to this verse okay he says look at these uh, look at these very what uh, what is the word i mean primitive foolish hindu astronomers actually the uh, the obliquity is 23.4 or 23.5 but you know they are calling it 24 and it's a huge error astronomically speaking so then he goes and writes the next note he says therefore the whole chapter and they're all claims on this sophisticated instruments in Surya Siddhanta is nothing but a talk and only the instruments on the paper. Otherwise, they would have found 24, I mean 23.4 or whatnot, because he is stuck that it is only 1500 years old. Okay, let's see what happens. So, this one is 24. The obliquity it says is 24. There is another reference where it also says 24. And the other place it is given in such a way that it cannot be an approximation. The number system is such, I won't go into the details, but it's such that if they wanted to say 24.1, they had an ability to do it with the, with the tables of sines and cosines, which are in Surya Siddhanta, by the way. Okay? So, 24, remember, two pole stars and 24 degree is our nod. Uh, so, the obliquity is 24. So, now, here is the catch. And therefore, I just pick those two data points. It so happens that in 2900 BC, but also 12,000 BC, when we have two pole stars, but it so happened that in both times, it was at 24. Because remember, 24 is said like this. So it has gone here, gone here. So it was 24, went here and came back. So again, it's going to hit 24 twice, just in the close bracket. All right, how do we solve it? We have a third reference. And we didn't know that, by the way, that it will solve it. Uh, Atya, same, same chapter, 12th chapter, Bhugol Adhyay. Atya sannatayate na grishme tivra kararave deva bhage suranam tu hemante manda tanyatha. There is a manda motion and shigra motion. Th those of you who are familiar might know it. So essentially what we are looking for is this combination. We are looking for three things. One is uh, the two pole stars. The second one is uh, the 24 degree obliquity. And the third one from this verse it is telling us what it is saying is it says the peak of Hemantarutu. Before I go there, everyone familiar with the sea Indian seasons or a quick you know quick primer on this. So let's say we start with the 21st June. Okay. So 21st June and after two months is a Varsha Rutu, then additional two months is a Sharad Rutu, then Hemantarutu. Now we got the winter solstice, 22nd December. Then we have a Shishir Rutu, Vasanta Rutu, Grishma Rutu. Okay. So, it is referring to that Hemanta Rutu, the peak of Hemanta, which means what? Approximately one month before 21st December in our times. Okay. It is saying the position of the earth was at the apopsis. That is what that verse is saying. And at the peak of Grishma, it was the position of the earth was at periapsis, which was closest to the, closest to the sun. Okay. Now, before I show you that combination, let me say, let me show you something else and see uh, how many of you can recognize this figure. That same verse, if shown in a different fashion, like another uh, interpretation, not a different interpretation, different view of what that verse is essentially saying. Anyone with a somewhat astronomy or physics or modern physics background, does this figure remind you of something? Copernicus, the same thing. Copernicus. Who? Uh, atom? Okay, some anyone else? He is close, but not right on the money. In fact, what you are saying here, anyone? No? It's a Kepler's law. Kepler's law. What you are saying is a Kepler's law. Okay. Now let's go to the timing of it. If we have to bring those all three things together, 
that we have two stars, pole stars, one in the north, one in the south. The obliquity is equal to 24 degree and the peak of Hemanta at the apopsis and peak of Grishma at the periapsis down to the day, the two month season. So, right in the middle down to the, the day, the periapsis and apopsis location, the timing comes out is at 12,000 BCE. Now, plus minus 50 years, that does not change anything. And so, naturally, as soon as you say something about astronomy, people immediately say, well, it is a repetitive phenomenon. So, would not could not have it happen some other time, of course. But you know what? If you, I mean, I just tested just to make myself uh, confident. Uh, I went for like a 300,000 years, 3 lakh years. After that, actually, you know, I mean, the whole nakshatra system disappears. You know, we, we have a problem with our nakshatra system. And there is only one instance in say 100,000 years, 200,000 years, 300,000 years, that is what it is. Now, uh, so this is just a summary of picture there. Now, what should come to your mind? So, we looked at two references. One is I said the longitudes of nakshatras gave us 580 C from Surya, Surya Siddhanta and the one I just mentioned two pole stars uh, 12,000 BCE. As a skeptic, see the, uh, the, the samshay has a, the, the, the skepticism of the buddhi, not of the mind has a tremendous value because it refers to additional growth of knowledge. What could be your skepticism if you see this? What, what are some of the questions that you would have? How many of you are convinced by the way about the 12,000 BCE? Nobody? <laughs> Stun like you know let me digest that. If, if uh, this, uh, this has been tested uh, that this triangulation that means three point coincidence has not happened for past 1 lakh years or 2 lakh years then obviously it is right on the one. Correct. Okay. And then there is no room for further questioning. Okay. But as a samshaya, you know, as a doubt is one of the essential ingredients. What, what could be the, uh, you know, something that you might say, well, okay, if this is the case, maybe I want to see this just to make feel myself, you know, yourself. Any other star kind of, kind of uh, doubt can be there. Any other? That means which stars were they pointing? No, that doubt cannot be there because I showed you because you can find multiple combinations, but then you also have to have a degree of 24 degree and the apopsis periapsis just won't happen. So, as far as the combination goes, it is one unique combination. But you might say, all right, so what is it? This is an update to Surya Siddhanta, this is an update to Surya Siddhanta, right? Because the two pole stars is not a constant phenomenon. Uh, well, that is it. I mean, do not you have any other additional updates? If somebody wants to disprove it, yeah. I mean, they might say that there is another instance of some other words in Surya Siddhanta, yeah. which points to something which could not happen in 12,000. Correct. The, then they have a very good point. Everyone understands what he is saying, which means they have to do the work. Hmm. Okay. So, like you know, the Mandan and Khandan, right? Yeah. So, so, right. So, they have three evidences. We will have to look all, at all, all other evidences if they are there. Right. But so what you find is, I mean, this is just our work, but there are other Mahabharata, there are other Surya Siddhanta researchers who have found additional updates to the text. I'm going to quickly walk you through. This is uh, uh, we hear, we heard here DRDO and uh, ISRO. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Anil Narayanan. He was a former ISRO scientist now in Washington D.C. Uh, these papers are in the public domain. You know, so what he looked at is the latitudes of the nakshatras. You know. And it is a bit involved than the, uh, than the longitude because longitude changes very fast. Latitude of nakshatra is bit more complex. He did a very brute force analysis like use multiple factors, anything that can change. And he did not know, he did not have any expectation, there is no agenda. You know, he said let me see where it goes. That took him to 7500 BCE. So, what I am saying is the, the values of the latitudes of the nakshatra in Surya Siddhanta when those values were calculated and assigned to it, when he went back, it took to 7500 BC. That paper is out there. Okay. Uh, then the equation of the sun. Now, this is his original work in fine tuning, but uh, John Playfair has done it as early as 1700. The paper exists. Dharampal, you know, Dharampal has uh, copied that paper. The equation of the sun, the most accurate equation of the sun, like explaining, predicting the position of the sun. Okay, the, it was the, the in the Surya Siddhanta equation for the sun was most accurate in 5300 BC. What John Play, Playfair did is like his crude calculation came to 4300 BC. Not that bad, not that different. It's 5300 BC. There is a somewhat speculative another update 
uh, is that obliquity of the earth's axis around 2900 BC. Remember I said there is a second reference in the Surya Siddhanta that refers to 24 very very accurate that also happened in 2900 BC, but there is some other reason why that update happened besides the obliquity. And then my work on Mahabharat, uh, those who have read that book or otherwise, there is another update. Now, Surya Siddhanta refers to removal of Ab Ab Abhijit. It is a very indirect reference based on their values, longitudes, what it is there. So, Abhijit was removed, that is what Surya Siddhanta talks about, but it does not talk about when it was removed and why it was removed. Interestingly, we find that answer in Mahabharat. Now, Mahabharata is not saying it happened in their times, Mahabharata is saying, Mahabharata is referring to the past history about the star Vega and why, why Abhijit was removed from the list. And that takes us all the, there are uh, eight different things in Mahabharata particular verses, like four verses and they all can be explained only if you assume 14,500, 14, no other timing. So then suddenly it does not look very awkward, right? Just suddenly two updates, actually there are series of updates. And so the question remains, I mean, how many verses we looked at? Possibly out of 500, maybe 10 verses max. There are 480 verses out there, 90 verses out there. We just do not know what is hidden in, in those ones. So, just putting that in the context, like, you know, I call this foundations of Vedic civilization, time, you know, as a Kala, we have the Mahakala, you know, like an Ujjain, but then Khanda Kala, if you have to talk about the history in a mortal sense, we have to stop somewhere and, you know, start somewhere. So, uh, going back all the way here, gray, this is not to the scale at all. Um, so, quickly as a foundation, I mean, many of you have seen the other videos, like you know, um, now we have enough evidence to tell us that the Saraswati river started sometime around 90,000, 70,000 BC, that is when it started flowing. Okay? So, that is not to say that there was no civilization before that, but any, any reference which refers to Saraswati more than likely is after this time. You understand what I am saying? That does not mean there is no civilization. Now, what we know from geology data, uh, hydrology data is that Yamuna split from Saraswati around 50,000 BC. There is a very recent paper 2018 that supports this conclusion and says possibly it happened after 50,000 and more than likely before 41,000. So, so it is all that additional research is just taking towards the same number. Then uh, the end of Grand Saraswati happened around 22,000 BC. Uh, and uh, then 13,000 BC, the Shutudri started flowing westward instead of coming south and going to Saraswati. And uh, then the Grand Sindhu, like you know, if you look at the Rugveda around that time, it is no longer Saraswati, the Grand River, but the Grand Sindhu. And by 2000 BC, I am being very conservative, the river Saraswati was no longer flowing. It can be actually 4500 BC, 3000 BC. I am just taking, you know, a very conservative number for this. Against this, I told you this uh, Ramayana, Valmiki Ramayana evidence puts it at 12,209, uh, Mahabharata puts it at 5,561 BC. Uh, Mrugendra, we know, and the Srijan Foundation again did the, did his lectures, uh, the epoch of Veda Shaka Provachan, okay. And so, he, uh, he talks more like a 3765 BCE. Um, you know, just so that you know that I had given those numbers to him. I had given him the mean position, but you know, I told him that actually it is a 3765, but it can go up to 5000 BCE, you know, astronomically. It is a plus minus 1000 years, plus minus 2000. So, it is very nicely fits into that post Mahabharata epoch of Veda Shaka Pravachan. And why I am showing you this? Again, the Rugveda, I will go fast through this. The Rugveda, we definitely know the last part uh, is, is, you know, uh, with the time of Mahabharata because Vyasa is editing it. That is how we have Shantanu and Devapi into Rugveda. When we go backwards, what we definitely know is that it goes, the oldest part goes beyond 20,000 going backwards. How far back we do not know, we do not have evidence to nail it down. But 63742, at least the parts of those mandalas are definitely older than 22,000 BC, so that is the 24,000 BC. Now, why am I showing you this? So, now this is from other uh, other sciences like the epics and Rugveda and hydrology and whatnot, and now we have that Surya Siddhanta. So something you know, if we think one is impossible, like how come it's a fourteen thousand five hundred years? If you have this picture, you think okay, that makes perfect sense. There is a civilization going on in all fronts, and things are being added, things are being modified, things are being updated. Okay. Um, 
quick uh, my marketing slide if you want to call it uh, just the books and you know so the the challenge with my books was they were printed and they're still printed by amazon in in the united states so it cost a lot you know they get shipped here and so on so one young entrepreneur he's doing this as a absolutely non-profit uh, uh, with spirit one man show and um, so the, all the three books of mine are uh, i mean the first two are already there in fact, you know, uh, something amazing like uh, I, I forgot the dates, but Mahabharata came maybe uh, two months ago or three months ago, something like this, the Indian edition and the first print run is gone. Okay, the, uh, now this, some, something very funny happened. I mean, I said, is this real or you are just telling me this 12,209, he, uh, he came up with the, the Indian edition two weeks ago. 26 January, I remember that's the day he gave the copy to Sri Sadhguru. In, in Hubli, you know, the first copy. So two weeks, I mean, right now, that's where we are right now. And that print run is gone. So if you have bought it, thank you so much. <laughs> if you have not, then you have a reason to. And this third book is not out yet. Uh, it should be, if everything goes well, it should be out by Monday, this, this coming Monday. And the pre-orders are just shy of 1000. That's what he told me yesterday or day before, the pre-orders, okay? All right. And that's, I think, the end of my first presentation. Thank you.